Alright. Do you like all skills? Do you like freezing enemies and hearing sound as they explode? Yes? Well, welcome to Ice Age. Now, you might ask, why Slayer? Well, let's take a look at his ascendancy skill tree. Bane of Legends Give you onslaught for 20 freaking seconds on killing rare or unique monster. You will have this almost all the time when doing maps. Another extremely important thing for this is kill enemies that have 20% or lower life when hit. It is like upgraded version of cooling strike and you will notice stronger monsters suddenly dying when their life become low. Headsman 20% more damage if you killed in the past 4 seconds and 20% increased AoE. That is a lot, but that is not all. Endless Hunger is amazing. 20% overkill damages reach us life and life reach is not stopped when you are, you are at full life. You will be surprised how tank you can become with this, but for a short period of time. So once you kill big pack of monsters, go all balls in or go home. And finally, impact. It gives 50% increased AoE and node before it gives 5. So in total you can get 40 freaking percent increased AoE just from Slayer Ascendancy skills. That is huge. Witch and Templar AoE 3 combined only gives 30% increased AoE. Think about that. You will cover all the screen with Ice Nova and rip your FPS in big pack of monsters but whatever. Now I should talk about passive skill tree before I move on. From duelist you will go left, but first pick life and mana nodes and then go quickest way through cyan life nodes but don't take them all. Then go up towards witch tree, taking second jewel slot and life and mana regen node. Then you can either go templar or witch tree. Both will have increased UE nodes and damage nodes. Once you get there, you can start using Ice Nova. But in the end, you will take both trees. If you have 5 link armor, you might take mana and mana regen nodes first from which tree and later take damage nodes. Or just use mana flask and take all damage nodes and of course increase the UE nodes. There are some options. Mana regen might be a problem, especially if you reserve most of your mana. In this case, you might grab nodes with reduced mana cost of skills, socket jewels with mana regen and focus on gears that give mana regen. Also later you might want to experiment with your build, uh, maybe take extra endurance charge and use endurance cry. Uh, you can go to reduce mana reserve wheel, but you are not gonna be using auras, so it will only affect your mana reservation. Now links. The main links for Ice Nova are Control Destruction, Increased AoE, Spell Echo. I have been using this falling setup for quite some time until level 85 I think. It was quite painful but mm, it was doable. Additional links are Call to Fire, that is great damage boost. As for 6 link there are some options. Ice Bite, Hypothermia or Cold Penetration. Ice Bite is nice and requires less mana regen. It also gives freeze chance and provides with frenzy charges when you kill frozen enemies. Frenzy charges give you overall damage boost, gas speed but against bosses it is not very useful. You can also link Ice Bite to Herald of Ice and you will generate frenzy charges while clearing packs of monsters. Hypothermia is good for two reasons. Additional freeze gives you more survivability and since you cast Ice Nova twice because of spell echo, you will chill enemies on first cast and then second cast will do more damage because hypothermia does more damage to chilled enemies. And cold penetration as 6 link is kind of expensive for mana, so if you can afford mana regen then use cold penetration of course. Now for single target I was using frostbolt. 
It does not scale with AoE, but it is really nice damage and it has additional synergy with Ice Nova. So the links are Frostbolt plus Cold Penetration, Spell Echo and Control Destruction. Surprisingly, 4 links is enough. But if you use staff, then of course you can have 5 link or even 6 link. Then you can use another gems like Call to Fire, Faster Casting. Uh, elemental Focus can be good, but you will not be able to freeze enemies if you use it. Another way to boost your damage is to use Blasphemy linked with Frostbite Curse. But it has limited range and Ice Nova might not always be in effect of that curse. You should also use Frost Bomb. It has flat minus 20% cold resistance and 75% reduced life regeneration rate, which is really nice. Now let's talk about defense. Survival might be complicated, so you will even need shield with height armor and life to mitigate some physical damage, or you can play risk and use energy shield for damage or use stuff. But that is not enough. You will also have Enduring Cry. I didn't take extra endurance charges because I hate casting Enduring Cry, but if you do not mind casting it, you might take extra endurance charges as Bandit Reward in Merciless and another endurance charges in Templar 3. And with 5 endurance charges, you will mitigate some damage. On top of that, if your mana allows it, use Arctic Armor plus House Golem. It will mitigate about 50% physical damage. You can also use Molten Shell with Castman Damage Taken setup, but you should level them quite a bit. You can even use Castman Damage Taken with Enfeeble. This works good enough against long range enemies that your Frostbite Blasphemy does not reach. Now for your gears, mainly focus on getting as much life, mana regen, of course resistances must be maxed. The expensive part is probably getting Carcass Jack. I paid for it 2 exalts and 12 heroes at the start of Prophecy League, but I was extremely lucky and made it 6 link. But you are not required to have 6 link Carcass Jack, but you should at least 5 link it. If you cannot afford Carcass Jack, use whatever armor you can get, but at least 5 link it, because else your damage will just suck. Now for weapon there are few options. First and probably most expensive is Divinarius Dagger. It has nice spell damage and it gives 10% increased radius of area skills and has a small mana gain on kill which can help you solve mana problems. Now if you do not need more AoE you can use our weapon like Dorianis Catalyst but it is also quite expensive. You can even use Lavianga's Wisdom. I know, I know, don't laugh. <laughs> but it does have 10% increased AoE and 10 to 50% increased area damage. And it has some life and mana. But you would better off using some wand with spell damage and mana regen or scepter with elemental damage, spell damage, cold damage and regen. Now let's take a look at enchantments. For boots there are 3 options. Damage leech as life and mana if you have killed recently. But against bosses it is not very reliable. Another option is regen of life and mana if you were hit recently. In my opinion this might be better. And the last one is reduce mana cost of skills if you have been hit recently. Which is I'm using right now. For helm enchantments there are quite few options. Of course Ice Nova enchantments for damage or AoE. You might consider getting Arctic Armor enchantment which increase damage mitigation or reduce mana reservation because mana is probably the biggest issue with this build. You can also get Frostbite Curse Effect enchantment. And for gloves enchantment use whatever you can get. So just a quick summary. Early on you will be using meal skills until around Merciless, then you can start using Ice Nova. Leveling as Ice Nova might be a little bit hard and slow, but at later levels it will get better. Survivability is not really a big problem, except for elemental reflect monsters. You will have issues with mana, especially with 6 link and fast cast speed. 
you will rip your FPS, especially against large monster groups. And even if you have a strong PC, clear the speed is vital, right? You will not need to target monsters because you will hit all the screen. You can use Frostbolt from safe distance and then cast Ice Nova while targeting Frostbolts to kill dangerous enemies from far far away. You should be able to do any map mods except Reflect and No Region. I have played up to tier 11 maps and so far it was quite good. I did not encounter any real problem. So that's it guys, I hope you find it useful. I will add some links in the video description and if you got any questions or suggestions make sure to post them below this video. So thanks for watching and bye.